Welcome to SRPG Plus. It's Kapakai. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk about the very hype Nintendo Direct um, news. So it's happening tomorrow. Check out my uh, earlier video in case you guys uh, missed the announcement. But uh, just to recap, like we're having the first Nintendo Direct, like official Direct. This is gonna be 50 minutes. It's gonna uh, be centered around like um, Smash Bros. Uh, and then I think that's the only game that we know is gonna be there. So, um, uh, let me start the video by predicting another fighter. After we got Sephiroth and Minecraft Steve, I feel like anybody's fair game. And I've always wanted this guy in because he's from one of my favorite franchises, Kingdom Hearts. Sora or Riku, that'd be so dope. I know there's issues with Disney, but hey, hey, you never know. Especially after getting Minecraft Steve, that's, that's crazy. Or Master Chief. Something like that, just some big, some big. Or I guess they're gonna save that for uh, later. Maybe they do another like fighting game character. Maybe someone from like Mortal Kombat. Maybe like an Arc System Works uh, fighting game or another SNK property, you know? Another is, like I said in the previous video earlier today, in two days, February 18th, it is the Legend of Zelda's 35th birthday. Last year we celebrated Mario's 35th and we got Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which featured Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Because we got this, uh, this awesome collect- well, it's an- it's great games and okay collection, they could have done better. But hopefully, they do great, like they practically always do with their Legend of Zelda collections. Like back on the GameCube, that collection was legendary. I remember back in the day paying 50 bucks and it was worth it. Like me and my brother were like selling off some of our games because that we you got like Wind Waker demo, Ocarina of Time, uh, Master's Quest, fucking uh, Majora's Mask, uh, fucking 2D Zelda, the original. Like it was crazy. So I hope they do something kind of similar with that. Like uh, we could get a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD collection. We could get a HD Twilight Princess. We could get maybe a Skyward Sword released separately. Hopefully like 40 bucks or maybe extra content and better controls. That's the main thing, better controls. I don't want to do motion control Zelda is so weird. And so is touch, touch stylus uh, Zelda on the DS. I'd be cool with Phantom Hourglass and Phantom Tracks. Just like updating the controls would be major. I'm very hyped. Um, um, Grezzo was just kind of in the news recently. They've done so many um, Zelda games. Recently, they've done uh, Ocarina of Time on 3DS, Majora's Mask on 3DS, and Link's Awakening on Switch. If they have another Zelda game, probably 2D or maybe even a 3D remake, again, that'd be awesome. Um, they have a really cool art style. Uh, I really like what they did with uh, Link's Awakening on Switch. And so hopefully we got uh, good stuff planned for the 35th uh, anniversary. And then uh, another prediction, well, um, it's been a little bit, it's been a little bit since Fire Emblem Three Houses. So, what's next? What's next from the franchise? I think it's gonna be a little bit, maybe like four, four years, four, five years in between Fire Emblem Three Houses and the next newest Fire Emblem that continues like going forward with the like most newest entry. So I think we're gonna get an Echoes game and essentially Echoes, which was established on the 3DS, is a remake and essentially a retelling of a Fire Emblem game that, in this case, was never localized, Fire Emblem Gaiden, which was on Famicom. And that got remade on the 3DS, brought an amazing game, and so I'm very hopeful about getting a Fire Emblem Echoes game. Which game to get remade, though? I'm hoping either Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, that's Fire Emblem 4, that only came out on the Super Famicom. And hey, now they're starting to release, uh original fire emblem first time out of uh japan Let, let's bring uh let's bring fire emblem four and five to america those are some of the best strategy rpgs ever made fire emblem four literally feels like you're on a conquest like it takes essentially like two or three fire emblem like regular maps and puts them together very long battles very drawn out and especially with something like the switch you just put it in sleep mode. You don't have to worry about stopping and then picking it up later. A game like that would be perfect for handheld play. And it's, it, it just has one of the most amazing stories. 
a lot of people's favorite uh, things about Fire Emblem were introduced around this time period, uh, around Fire Emblem 4 and 5, and that was right before they came to the Game Boys. So next, I think we're going to see more of Monster Hunter Stories and Monster Hunter Monster Hunter Stories 2 and Monster Hunter Rise. Um, now that it's February, we're getting pretty close to the March uh, release date for Monster Hunter Rise, and I am so excited for that game. I put probably like 20 hours into the demo. That game's amazing. The Wyvern bug uh, with basically gives you like a permanent jump button, and the traversal is amazing. Even just going back to play the most recent Monster Hunters World in uh, Generations is going to feel weird after the inclusion of the wire bug, but... That's a pretty Monster Hunter-esque thing to do, is introduce something huge each new, like, generation of uh, Monster Hunter. Guessing they're gonna show probably, like, two to three new monsters. I know in the most recent uh, trailer when they showed the ice, the abandoned ship ice world map, they showed some of the uh, shark. I can't, I'm blanking on the name of the actual monster, but there's basically this giant shark, and there's these mini sharks that are kind of like its lesser, weaker, smaller version. It starts with a Z also like to see uh maybe like legiacris who knows maybe there could be some like swimming you never know uh maybe another brute wyvern what could they do to really get people hyped besides smash because we already covered that the legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 35th anniversary is pretty is very close very close announce breath of the wild 2 hey maybe they'll announce odyssey 2 you never know uh, if we got something new with Mario Kart, that'd be awesome. If we got something new with Super Mario Party, that'd be really cool. Because one, introduced some very cool mechanics, but not enough gameplay. Not enough boards, um, not enough online functionality. If those things get fixed, that'd be awesome. And then uh, lastly, hey yo, cut the tape, cut the mic. Diesel D's back? He hit me up after, after I had pretty much the first draft of this video ready. Man, this is a partner in crime on the channel, so I definitely got to get his takes. Um, I'll just mash it in here. Yeah, this is Anton from the future. I think the video turned out pretty well, so just uh, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, all that other YouTube shit. What's up, guys? It's me, Diesel D. So I wanted to add to this crazy prediction. I cannot believe that we are in the mix of another Nintendo Direct. And when I mean another Nintendo Direct, I mean the first nintendo direct in literally two years almost for sure one year but let's get right into it when it comes to just smash brothers characters and everything about this direct it just makes me want to think that capcom has so much in store for the switch and they do right now like there's so many things that are happening with capcom and like Monster Hunter, the remaster of Ghosts and Goblins, there is so much hype and focus, hyper focus on Capcom that there has to be a Capcom character put in Smash Brothers. Uh, there already is a, a bunch, but there's so many options. We've heard rumors in the past about Dante or Virgil, whatever, both of them at the same time, doesn't matter. Just a really, what's the word? gritty character like a gritty character with something that feels like something you wouldn't see in smash brothers you know like we had minecraft steve we've had cloud we had snake it would be the same sort of experience that we had when snake was put in back in brawl because of how like violent these characters are it's like putting master chief in i would rather have a Resident Evil character over any sort of Devil May Cry character because when you think about Resident Evil characters in fighting games it's some of the most iconic fighting games like the and that's any Capcom character really because of the versus Capcom series it makes you nostalgic for those those gameplay that gameplay that you had when you were playing Marvel versus Capcom 2 and you had Ryu versus Jill or something like that and like literally you can have these these battles like, I, there was a long time that I wanted to put a Mortal Kombat character in Smash so we could have Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter for the first time. But I feel like with the way Capcom is right now, the, how much hype is around those characters right now, it would be crazy for them not to put... I think they put Leon in over anything because of how popular Resident Evil 4 is. I know a lot of people are big fans of, like, Claire and Jill, but 
I wouldn't see those two in there before like Leon or they could just do like reskins where they do the same thing and just be different character skins which would be really cool um who else would they put in this game who else what other kind of Capcom characters are there um there's Arthur because Arthur's in the news right now but if they put Arthur in this game I would be so upset because there's so many different great options that they have for this game but instead they'd want to put something like Arthur in no way can't do it can't vibe but um do 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 the main character though the one the one that makes the most sense the one that has the most versatility the one that is a giant focus point on the gaming industry right now is the monster hunter series capcom games on the switch have been doing good monster hunter on the switch was amazing there is an unprecedented amount of hype behind this game because of Monster Hunter World in the US. Think about the hype that must be going on in Japan right now for this game. And we all know that like with Smash Brothers and Sakurai, they love their sword characters. And we're literally talking about a character that has five to six swords and limited options for status effects, even opportunities to do stun attacks with blunt objects. It's endless. The opportunities to either change the way this game is played or even just to use every single ability that has been put in Smash Brothers in the past and put it in a character. The possibilities for a Monster Hunter character in Smash Brothers is so endless and it would really put this game at the pinnacle of fighting games, which it already is. It already has such a giant conglomerate of people. It's hard to even throw somebody in here. But there is so much hype around Capcom right now. There's so much hype around Monster Hunter Rise. It is definitely going to surpass so many different games. It's going to be one of, I feel like, I don't necessarily know these stats off the top of my head, but it has the opportunity to be one of the biggest Switch games ever. And not only the biggest Switch game ever, but something that is a, not a first party game. It is one of the, I'm sure it's going to be one of the biggest first party games ever that comes out on the Switch. And it's going to, it's going to really bring up the, the player base. Everyone's going to come back to the Switch. Even if this game comes out on other consoles, it's going to get people talking about just the opportunities that the Switch has because this game looks amazing. Even on an old school Switch, if they, there's so many opportunities with Monster Hunter to really plateau the, or bring the Switch to a, brand new level and the only thing that i really wanted to talk about that's sort of guaranteed seems to be this whole zelda the one thing that i wanted to talk about that seems pretty guaranteed is talking about zelda 25th 35th anniversary when it comes to that there's so many options they can do it's hard to think that they would remaster games that came out in the past on the 3ds even though it is a handheld system and they would see a lot of amazing improvements when it comes to the 3d games on new hardware i i like the idea of the the portable games and all that getting remastered but what i really want out of a zelda 35th anniversary is either like an animated series or when it comes to when it comes to gaming the only thing that i think of off the top of my head is like a zelda maker like a like a legend of zelda maker for the 2d zelda games such a great idea crazy concepts you know i mean you get niche audiences for those games who just sort of commit to it and it doesn't really blow up in the mainstream but this game could pretty much be like it's almost like an rpg maker it's a dungeon it's a it would be a dungeon crawler maker that you would be able to use on a console that recreationally anybody could do it's like putting dreams on the ps4 it's gonna the possibilities are gonna be endless for a game like that and when it comes to endless possibilities we have to talk about an end of the show like mic drop sort of thing honestly there's nothing that i the things that i think about that are gonna happen are totally out of the blue like like i keep talking about capcom 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 what if capcom brought back maximo from the playstation 2 amazing series great spiritual successor to ghosts and goblins whether they remastered it or made did a remake of the series they could redo the whole series and turn it into like a full-fledged cartoony capcom action game that would be something i think would that would blow up 
you know, like a cartoony, kids-based action game with a little bit of like satirical humor to it, just like Ghosts and Goblins would have. I think it would do really well on the Switch. It would probably come to all other consoles as well. These remasters are doing well. Capcom is in in the hot seat. And if something like this was to happen, I would go crazy. The other thing that I'm thinking would be like a crazy end of show experience would be probably some news from Atlas in some way. Whether it's about um, Persona 3 and the Shimigami Tensei, or not Persona 3, Shimigami Tensei Nocturne and and Shimigami Tensei 5, but I feel like Atlas is trying to get their sh- their shit together and they're gonna they're really gonna put like Persona 4 on the Switch or something like that. You know, they're gonna put one of the older Persona games on the Switch, just like they did on the PC. I don't see why they wouldn't. It makes so much sense. And I feel like Atlas is just still not figuring that out, but hopefully it comes in the future. I mean, this, these are the predictions I have and maybe like Resident Evil 8, you know, I'm only, I'm only, I'm like only focused on Capcom for this part. I only, all I care about right now is Capcom's situation. Zelda is going to happen. There's going to be something, but I have so much hope for this game's, this, uh, this company. You know, I just wanted to take the time to check out, give you that opinion. You know, this has been Diesel D and more stuff with Nintendo Switch Online to justify us paying now versus not paying before and nothing much has changed. Well, the subscription paid for games are awesome that you can play like A Link to the Past and uh, Super Mario World like whenever you want on your Switch as long as you have the membership. That's cool. But let's get some more um, more retro consoles. Like It doesn't need to be like uh, the Wii U stuff on there, but hey, let's get like GameCube stuff. Let's get Game Boy Advance stuff. Let's get N64 stuff. Like, maybe even up until the Wii. Like, all of that would be so sick. Um, We'll see, though. Uh, Maybe there will be, like, a new system added. Because they did already just announce some new SNES games for... And a one NES game for this month of February, which comes out, I believe, on the 17th as well. Oh, wow, that... I just caught that, like... They announced uh, those games, like, a week ago, and they are like, February 17th, and also the Direct's gonna be there, so maybe... There will be more information, because that was kind of um, a letdown with the games that were recently announced. I'm hoping for another system. If they give us just a Game Boy, hopefully it's Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but I'm hoping for Game Boy Advance, because that's one of my favorite systems of all time. I love handheld, if you can't tell. Well, um, this was you guy, Kappa Kai. I just wanted to do some predictions for the first Direct in a thousand years like this is gonna be fucking crazy i'm so hyped it's gonna be very good for nintendo and the nintendo community we have kind of not had any big news to really go off like normal so it's kind of it's kind of nice to get back in the groove of things covid has done a huge impact just around the world socially economically and also it just affects gaming as well so this will be very nice to get a little little closer to normal peace out I'm gonna